What's up, guys? MXB Bob's here. I'm back with another story time. <laughs> I'm back with another story time. So, this one is a little. How do you say horror movie type shit? Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's roll the clock back. Let's roll the clock back, right? This was 2019. I had first started working at a restaurant called Grub, Grub Burger Bar. It's kind of in Louisiana and Texas and some in my more of a South restaurant. So, and uh, the deep South. So I don't know if you guys up North would, you know, know of it, but anyway, sell burgers and fries, American food It's pretty, pretty decent. Um, when I was eating it and I met a couple co-workers who lived there. It was a couple. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but I found out that it was a couple. They were around my age. The girl was, she was 19. She was 20 and he, he was 25 at the time. So he was a dishwasher and she worked up front with me passing out food, being a server, and being a cashier, flipping back and forth the register. So just looking at these people, they kind of look, how can I say this? Um, their appearance is like, maybe they were in a, a heavy metal band. The guy had a lot of tattoos and long black hair and wore eyeliner. It looked like he was in a heavy metal band and she kind of looked the same. She had a little bit of tattoos, black hair, uh, always gothic. She always dressed gothic. So again, at the time, it's not really, okay, look, it's not really, not really someone or not really people I would hang around with, but like from the start, we just kind of kind of clicked like we were just so cool and always you know laughing with each other and telling jokes and making the time go by faster while we were at work so <laughs> we got comfortable enough this is probably like two months in we got comfortable enough to start hanging out outside of work sometimes we go to the mall or we'll go to a bar and so this time they were like let's you know come to my house so I went to their house because they were living together. Uh, she had moved into his house and they were living with his mom. They were white. I don't know if I mentioned that. That doesn't matter, but I have to preface with that. She moved into his house. I went over there and the first thing first, their, hold on, let me eat a cookie right quick. First things first, when I went over to his house, the house was very junky. It was very, not necessarily the house, but their room or his room was really like, it was just junky, clothes everywhere. You know, I had a couple uh, cats. So it kind of, I don't know, they lived in a trailer home. It, it didn't smell the best. Let's just keep it like that. Let's just say that it didn't smell the best. And so, I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna judge, like, you know, it's cool. This is probably four four or five months in at this point. We're very comfortable with each other. Uh, we've been drinking, we've gotten high together, different things like that. Got to the point where I was living with my mom and I really wanted to move out. And so I went to them and asked them, hey, would you guys like to, you know, I'm thinking about moving out my mom's whenever we get our taxes back in February. So 2020 of February, would you like to move in? They were like, yeah, we, we want to ask you the same thing. Like, yeah, cool. All right, great. So we start looking for houses and long story short, we find a house, pay the deposits. This is like the beginning of February, moved in, right? 
cool right everybody at work you guys live together yeah that's cool that's awesome we're gonna come over and you know we started decorating the place we were going to like goodwill and different places i have you know in my truck so i would pick up certain things bring them to the house we had it decorated pretty cool it wasn't until april was where stuff got it a little out of hand let me explain so i told you you remember i told you about the house being junky i don't know why i didn't like i don't know why i didn't like look at that as a sign or remember that but i was just kind of hoping i guess that this wouldn't happen when we moved in this was about month two so beginning of april turns out the guy was an alcoholic and she was kind of one too because every night religiously every single night he would drink uh, two to three forties and she drink about one to two of the Smirnoff ice, like the, the ones in, the, bo in the, the bottles. She'd drink one or two of those every night and he'd get really messed up and she'd get kind of buzzed. Sometimes she would get three, she'd get drunk, but it was every night. And I was already kind of sick of it. Sometimes I had to like clean up behind them. Be the responsible one, you know, whether that's paying the bills, I called everywhere to set up um, the bills in my name. I set up, I had to do everything because they weren't used to, they had stayed at their mom's house the whole time. So I had to do everything. I'm having to wash dishes. I'm having to remind them, hey, let's pay the bills. Even though we had a whiteboard with all the bills on there, I put everything, laid everything out for them, right? Trying to be responsible, it wasn't enough. I was willing to let that slide because I'm like, at least I'm not staying home with my mom. And I wanted the freedom, but the freedom was great, right? Now I told you they were white. I found out later that their grandparents were like, uh, their grandparents are like in the 80s, so you can already see where I'm going with this. Are you moving in with him? Like, is he gonna be playing his music loud? Is he gonna have a bunch of his friends over, uh, getting high, doing illegal drugs? Um, is he gonna be, you know, having weapons and everything? You don't wanna get him, don't get caught up with him and things like that. Turns out they were the ones that were drinking. They were the ones that were doing the drugs. They were the ones that had the guns. Yeah, he had, she had a gun, a handgun, and he had uh, two assault rifles. They were playing music live. Something else happened that was major, which is why I moved out. That's gonna be in a part two. This is part one. That's gonna be part two, because that's a whole different story. That one is gross. I don't even wanna get into that right now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep it where I'm keeping it. Part two is coming soon, don't worry. We got to the end of April. And what's weird, it was around my birthday. So like I had this, I had this dream one night. This kind of set things in motion. I had this dream one night where it wasn't even a dream. I'm serious. I saw a ghost. I saw a ghost. I was laying in my bed. It was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting there. I mean, I'm laying down and I'm, I'm on my side like this, all right? All of a sudden, I turn over on the other side and I see a black figure in a dress standing right there. My eyes were open. I was not asleep. And like, I slowly looked up at her and she was looking down on me. Now, the figure was kind of, I don't know if you guys have seen Insidious, but you know, like that, I'll probably put it right here. That black figure that's from Insidious, uh, who had the dress, who tried to get in his body, who did get in his body. That was kind of a figure. I hadn't watched Insidious or any horror movies around that time. So it wasn't like I watched it before bed and then I dreamed about it or somehow, like, no, that was not the case. And so I kind of screamed. I threw the cover of my head. I'm like, nope, 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 mm-mm, mm-mm. Nah, this, nah, nah, this not gonna work. So next morning I told my roommate, I'm like, hey, I told her, I said, I dreamed about this kind of figure last night and it really spooked me, you know, because she was staring down on me with, very like malicious intent, like she wanted to like murder me right there. And so I was kind of spooked. I told her and she was just kind of, oh, that's weird, oh. That's all she said, okay. Well, that next, very next day, I was at work and she was off and he was at work. 
mind you, I had two jobs. So I was actually at my welding job when she called me. I wasn't at the burger place. I was at my welding job. Um, and he was at the burger place. So she called because she was very spooked. And she was like, oh my God, oh my God, like crying, like, huh? Like just spooked. I said, what's wrong? Like, she said, I'm outside right now. We had a picture in the hallway, had been there since we, had been there since we moved in. She called me because it fell and it broke. Like she was, she was in there um, making herself a sandwich or something. And she said, it just all of a sudden, bam, like just fell and class shut it everywhere. And she told me that I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, do you think the house is haunted? Like what's going on? And she was like, I don't know, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm gonna stay outside till you guys get home. I'm, I'm scared, I'm here alone by myself, I'm nervous. Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay, I'll be there in like three hours because I just want to get off. I got there and she said, come outside, let me tell you something. I'm like, okay. We sit in the back and she's like, um, I don't know if it's haunted, but I talked to her boyfriend, I'm not going to say his name. I talked to him and he said, don't worry about it. It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But she told me, she said, yeah he he was into like a little she didn't say devil but she said he was he, he's very um like agnostic or he, he's like an atheist so he really doesn't and i didn't even know that i did not know i mean of course i again i'm not gonna look at somebody and just preconceive have a preconceived notion that they're this even though again he had the black tattoos and stuff i just didn't want to think like okay he's just an atheist or whatever because we never really talked about it like that about three days later, me and him are sitting outside. I grabbed a drink. I think it was like a Michelob Ultra or something. And I'm sitting in the back drinking, had one drink. We start talking. He said, yeah, she told me that you had a dream about the figure. And I was like, yeah. And then the painting and then the painting uh, fell the next day. He said, let me let me tell you something, man. I'm like, this can't get any worse. He told me when he was 16. Now, again, he's 25. He told me when he was 16, he sold his soul to Satan. He sold his soul to Satan, and my face was like, what? <laughs> What? No, my face was like, what do you mean? He was like, yeah, um, she wasn't living with me at the time. I was 16. I was big into devil worship. So one night, one night in particular, I did this ritual where I lit candles all around my room. I wrote some, some shit on the raw, on the wall and like scribble. Right. Um, he had this book where he laid it out. He did the chants. He sacrificed something. I forgot what he said. He had some blood. He did whatever. And he, he chanted the, whatever the text was. He chanted it out. And he said, Satan came to visit him. He said, wind started blowing papers all around his room. He started talking about how his eyes started rolling to the back of his head. He said he pulled out like a black marker or a crayon. He opened the book. Well, the book was already open. He grabbed another book that was like blank. And he said, Satan started telling him, what to write down and he started writing down what satan told him in a book and he said when he got done like he could it was legible like he could read it like what satan told him to write down he was writing it fast and he said his eyes would roll to the back of his head and the whole time the whole time i'm sitting there i'm like <laughs> i'm sitting there like bro this is something that and then he saw my face. So he's, this is what he, this is what he told me. He said, no, bro, don't worry about it. That's almost 10 years ago. I should be fine. Like that shouldn't affect me now. I'm like, nigga, what? Huh? <laughs> bro, what do you mean? Like I'm sitting over here like stressed out. Cause I'm like, I'm living with a Satanist. What the? I'm living with a Satanist and I was just like, what should I do at this point? At that time I was 
I wasn't going to church every Sunday, but you know, I was still going to church and you know, I will still very, very Christian, very, you know, deep in my faith. I was genuinely scared because I didn't know if that means that, and you know, I'm all about like energy, right? So that's what I'm saying. The energy started to feel different after we moved in, especially that time. I'm like, I know me dreaming about that was not just a coincidence, right? And so that whole situation taught me a valuable lesson to really vet or really like dive deep into somebody's personality or whatever before I move in with somebody. After that, I was like, you know what? I'm never having roommates again. I'm going to live by myself. And if I can't, I'll go back and live with my a family member, my mom or somebody, but I will not have roommates again because of that. Like that really scarred me for life. I'm being dramatic. But what I'm saying is I didn't see myself moving in with any roommates in the near future. Now, something else did happen, which was kind of equally on the same um scale kind of which made me actually move out i'll say that for part two but that 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 is um really just stupidity i mean this was this was really something that you know made me open my eyes to how people can hide stuff you know and it's, it's my fault because i've i've should have i should have known you know again i didn't want to judge anybody too soon but looking at them looking back i'm like okay bro like you should have known it like look at them i'm just gonna say if you guys are moving into somewhere with roommates or roommate just really really think about it i'm not advising you not to but just really think about it have some awareness and try to vet them and see you know how it is and i'm not trying to play the victim i'm not trying to just say i was completely innocent you know but satan that's a big one but all right i'll see you guys in part two